And uh, the next paper we have is by Jenny Pai and Massimo Massa. Is hard and soft information substitutable? You have uh, 20 minutes. Jenny, go ahead. I think you're on mute. Sorry. No, I'm not on mute anymore. Can you hear me, anyone? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, thanks a lot, Roger. Sorry about it. Uh, okay, great. So today, I will talk about uh, information substitutability. It's just one more COVID paper. Um, one year ago, Washington, D.C., where I live, has uh, issued the executive order of lockdown. And this is not just D.C., it's all over America, mainly in March and April. And whatever name it use, uh, curfew, quarantine, stay at home, shelter in place, whatever it is, they all lead to one consequence, social isolation. And uh, this, has this has affected many non-essential workers, including you and me, and also the fund managers. So social isolation has tremendously affected the way people collect, transmit, and handle information. And now, because of social lockdown, we hardly can have meetings, the personal meetings, collect and gather the soft information. The physical interaction has been cut. And the people try to switch to hard information, all the virtual world, like what we are doing right now. So is soft information tied to human physical contacts? All the virtual world is sufficient to reproduce information. All the can soft information be quickly replaced by hard information. Alternatively, the two types require totally different technologies that cannot be easily adapted. These are the questions we try to ask and answer in this paper. Before we go to anything formally test, we first need to understand what is hard information, soft information. Ever since this seminal work by Jeremy Steins 2002 and Mitchell Peterson 2004, Hard and soft information is just a general words about two types of information. Each of them has many characteristics. For example, when we talk about soft, it could refer to the meetings, informal talkings. They are qualitative, it's hard to verify, and cannot be observed, and very often they are private. And hard information, on the other hand, they are quantitative. They can be verified, codified, and often public. But is any information a soft or hard? It's not always super clear. And instead, there's no precise boundary. For example, when we talk about the texture analysis, just like the previous paper, texture analysis from those balance sheet information, is that hard or soft? That has one feature, is qualitative, that can be classified as soft, but they can also be codified. So that is also the hard information. So in this paper, we specifically define soft information as human interaction-based information. It can be physical or can be virtual. We're going to study information substitutability by testing the impact of lockdown on proximate investment. This pandemic trigger lockdown provide, provide a perfect uh, randomized natural experiment for this information, which I will elaborate further in after a few slides. Now let's go back to the literature approximate investment. Why this is a good lab to test information substitutability? This indeed is long literature on in approximate investment or called home buyers. Literally, this is said that geographic approximately is argued to facilitate information production and can provide local information advantages. So fund managers tend to invest more unproportionately in companies located closer to their funds. And this strategy has been proved to deliver better performance, although the long literature has shown how this per superior performance might be weaker and weaker over time with technology and all these things, including our discussion, jo Johan, who also has a paper on this side. So given the clear documentation of geographic proximity, the source of local information advantage, however, is not clear. The literature generally shows three explanations. One, 
Proximity facilitates collecting soft information. In particular, this is related to the bank relationship literature. By being local, have a relationship, you can have unique information, and then you can have information advantage to transform the uh, performance. The second explanation is more kind of hard information. Being local, you can have a better understanding of local economy, and hence the local perspective of local firms. Some paper just mentioned observing the parking lot, even without any interactions, you can gain more information about the local. And the last alternative is all about behavior buyers. For example, I'm familiar with local, so I'd like to invest more. I have a trust of local companies, or I have a responsibility to build up the local community firms. All of this, in this paper, we generalize and refine all of this explanation by introducing a specific one. We call it a soft, soft, or soft, hard information substitutability. What is that? So, one very unique thing in locked, COVID lockdown is we do everything virtual, like what we are doing now. Instead of a conference, we can meet each other, talk to each other. So the soft soft substitutability hypothesis postulates that proximate investment is related to you can, the human interaction-based soft information in whichever form, physical or virtual. So if that way, lockdown may trigger a shift from the physical social interaction to virtual one. But if both are perfectly substituted with each other, then they should not affect the degree of proximate investment and further the relative information advantages. If that is not the case, virtue cannot be fully substituted for the physical interaction, then it's more likely the proximate investment related to fund managers will go to some hard information. And then in this case, this will increase the relative benefits of distant investing and push fund managers to rebalance their portfolio toward distant stocks, which is mainly relying on hard information, which you can collect in online from their balance sheet, do not rely on uniquely on local soft information advantages. And the last one is the local information hypothesis. It's pretty much about hard information. So proximate investment is related to non-interaction based local information, a better understanding local economy or better understanding of local firms. In this case, lockdown, they only affect the physical interaction. They also do not affect the ability to gather and process non-interaction based hard information. So they should not affect the relative benefits of distant investing and approximate investment. So as said, in this paper, we exploited this randomized experiment. Lockdown has very rich cross-sectional information. I will show it in two slides. And this is this exogenous shock is very well adjust the reflection problem or the critique raised by Mansky in his famous work in the 1993. And we employ a difference in difference methodology for relatively short window just before the lockdown and during the lockdown and use this very rich cross-sectional variation in lockdown to study two things, the impact of lockdown on the fund allocation and the fund performance. If anything you want to take away from this paper, we want to highlight one thing, human interactions matters. It's not a general local story. Even you are local, if you do not have such physical interactions, you will not gain local information advantages. Non-information based, in, non-interaction based information like hard information cannot substitute it. Virtual word also is not sufficient to substitute it. Human interaction matters. So it's typical data. We need to find holding data to check this. Our unique data is on the pandemic lockdown. We use two types of proxy. The first one is an executive order of lockdown. This dummy lockdown MT, if a fund located a zip code M, in a specific amount T is under elective, under enforcement of the lockdown, its dummy will equal to one. So in United States, 33 states enforced the lockdown in March 2019, and another 12 states joined the list in April, but six states never issued lockdown orders. So this one is good for the calendar case, 
But there's shortcomings for it. We know American people pre cherish freedom. Even you have lockdown, it's, it's voluntary. It's not enforcement like the Singapore, other countries. So people move around. What best to capture that information is footprint. Our second type is real business activity contraction proxied by footprint. Again, this is about the, or we introduce a dummy variable. If the fund located zip code have encountered, for example, 30% cut contraction in footprint activities during that month compared to one year ago before the pandemic lockdown. So this is a very unique footprint data is from SafeGraph. They provide a patterns to 3.6 million commercial points of interest. What do you mean commercial points of interest? Like next year, AFA will in, be in Boston. Well, Jeff can tell us more, which restaurant you should go, which hotel is better to live. So this data will tell you the number of visits people go to a specific restaurant, for example, during that time intervals. And this data is well balanced in the USA's demographic and geographic, and covering about 10% of the US population. So for more detail, how matching this data is uh, in matching the US demographic and geography, you can, you can go to the website to check their uh, company's information. So based on this, we can show the contraction, and this is showing the mean and median value, the aggregate footprint activity in million number of visits, pretty much stable before the pandemic, but ever since this March, which is here, and April, they have a tremendous luck uh, job. And then in May and June, they kind of cover up, but never go back to the same level as before. And if you're looking at the peak of this contraction time, so March versus March, one year before, April versus April, the percent of the change of footprint activity, the mean value will be 40% job, and this one will be even 73% job. We use this 75 percentile, the 30% job, as our cutoff to define a dummy variable if a local zip code has encountered a business contraction as lockdown. Okay. So, in order to do proximate investment, uh, number one thing is measuring the average distance. We follow the home buyers literature and especially the Kovo Moscovich JF paper. The average distance for fund M at, in a given month is weighted average of their feral distance between the fund's zip code and the stock's zip code. And the key here is you need to use the X excess weight. It doesn't matter how much you weight this fund. It's really in respect to you in uh, benchmark index. It's more of that. That is average this matter. So this chart can give you a preliminary idea. The average distance is a median value. It's pretty stable. But then during lockdown, it's increased. So it's kind of, it's already can give you a sense on average funds tend to invest more far away. So our number one test is on the fund portfolio allocation. We want to check how the lockdown impact on the excess weight, okay? And in the, the key parameter we are interested in the gamma, the interaction term of the distance between a firm and a fund and during the lockdown. So you can see the parameter for the lockdown is negative, but not significant. So overall, during the lockdown, the excess weight is not necessary to job. Although the weight, it jobs significantly, but the excess weight is not necessary to job significantly. However, the interaction of them is significantly positive. That means if a firm is already further away during lockdown, the fund manager tend to increase the weight in that particular firm. You may argue that, wait, wait a second, if fund manager increase weight, maybe due to many other reasons. For example, the firm's performance is good, so we control for the firm return. Firm's other characteristic, fund fixed effect, firm fixed effect, time fixed effect, and also the lockdown dummy Similar like this one for fund, we also have a firm lockdown. So there's a firm located zip code, what is specific lockdown information might have impact. You can tell the T-stat is very strong for these two control variable, but even whatever it is, the controlling for them, this interaction term remains significant. So economically, if a stock's the firm is 100 miles closer to the holding fund than average, 
funds during the lockdown will reduce the portfolio weight or the excess weight by about 18 or six basis point. Okay, which is not small at all. Five and then we want to, then we, well, how many minutes? Five minutes. Thank you. And then we want to curious to see what are those firm, firms found that invest and in de, de, de invest during the lockdown. So all the funds will be sorted into five portfolio, 81 to 85, based on their average distance. And what we can see is if you're looking at the blue bar, newly invested firms during lockdown are almost 13% further away than the firms divested if for those funds in the 81, which means the funds investing locally. And the firms with already existing firms, if they see an increased investment, they are even 25% further away than the firms, the funds decrease their investment. And this is only uniquely, I mean, all the firms tend to increase investment in distant stocks, but those funds in the approximate investment is significantly larger than this one. This particular need to divest this thing. And also we use this measure by Capitrack and Sarah's JFP for reliance on public information. We show that funds investing locally during the pandemic, they got significantly increase their reliance on public information with p-value of less than 5%. And for funds already investing far away, they also increase reliance on public information, which is analyst forecast, but the increase is not significant. And other unshown results, we also show those newly invested during the lockdown, they tend to be more friendly to have the hard information. They have more cash, more tangibility, they have less forecasting error about it. So overall, this finding so far is showing that uh, funds during the lockdown, and since they couldn't do the physical interactions, they tend to rely on more on hard information. They investing a lot in the distant stocks, and meanwhile, they reduce their holdings in the proximate stocks. This is rejecting the soft, soft substitutability and more pro probu to the soft and hard substitution ability. Now we want to check how this impact the fund performance. Now this is a fund level. Again, we check how the funds, the pre-pandemic average distance will be a, a interaction with this lockdown. So overall footprint during the footprint lockdown, fund has negative performance, but those already investing far away they tend to have a relatively more positive performance. If you're looking at the alpha and the beta, so we're using the daily data to calculate for the in, within each month and run a similar regression, you can tell the risk adjusted alpha during the lockdown is significantly lower, but those investing further away, they tend to have a higher positive alphas. And those in the alpha, you can tell, Firms investing locally used to be, before the pandemic, they have good performances. They have a higher alpha than for, for firms investing far away. But that uh, information advantage is significantly reduced to be negative. And this difference is still significant with a p-value of zero, while the other is just not significant again. So lastly, we want to test the local information hypothesis. You might argue that uh, being local, you can access more, even without interaction, by observing the parking lot, by observing many other things, I can still gain the information advantages. So we design a unique test to pair the funds. What do they do? They are local, which means they are adjacent in geography, but they are affected differently in the degree of social interaction. So here is a plot showing Florida's Duval County and St. John's County. Duval, which is closer to you, they are in the same beach, but this part, the front part, has been on lockdown. So no people show up, but the other way, further away, they do not ban this lockdown. So they have a lot of people. Literally, this is just one beach. So we test a pair of funds located locally but they have been affected significantly different by the lockdown. And we redo this test, we still find the remain the same thing. We even require the funds to be as close as 20 miles, which is just less than 20 minutes drive, very, very local. You can still find these findings. Give you an example, it's a kind of a firm, a fund in Manhattan and a fund across the river in New Jersey. They just have different social degree interactions, but 
they are or both are local and the result still remains. And this will reject the non-interaction-based local information hypothesis. So even you are local, if you do not have the interaction, you do not have this superior information advantages. Lastly, we check where does those soft information come from? For example, if this data is so rich, for the footprint, we can label them for all kinds of industry code. So we try all kinds of the activity job, see which type part of this activity footprint contraction will affect the phone performance. And our findings favor a human channel. We find it's a cafe, restaurant, drinking places, fitness center, bookstore, they have a most salient impact on fund performance during the lockdown. We also check the fund families' organizational structure as their impact affected soft information. We find that if the fund family rely on more on sub-advisors, so this is a less centralized managing structure, they will rely more on soft information, and which means they're going to suffer more from this pandemic shutdown. And if you have a smaller team, uh, makes sense. If you're a smaller team, you have your capability to do the social interaction locally, it also be affected. So Overall, we have to wrap we up. Find, okay. okay, we wrap up. Nothing can replace a human touch. The virtual world is beautiful, Zooms, Skype team, but they cannot fully substitute physical interactions to collect and transmit soft information. Very likely, it takes time to adapt to the virtual world. I still remember my first virtual class teaching. It took me quite a long time to do the preparations. So the two types of information require different technologies. Not easily can be substitutable. So the Economist has an article showing the pandemic uh, triggered this uh, inadequate social interaction and it made the world realize how important the human interaction is. So the National Academy of Science show the social isolation has been linked to a 50% increased risk of dementia, 29% increased risk of heart disease, and 32% increased risk of stroke. Well, in this paper, we show social isolation is also linked to less soft information processed, collected, and transmitted, hence an increased risk for strategies relying on soft information. We can do very little to promote soft information transmission in COVID due to this uh, lockdown. But we can at least do one thing, try to reduce the risk of physical and emotional harm from the inadequate social interaction, which is now and here. Well, thank you very much for this virtual talk and I look forward to your questions and such interactions definitely help us, not only for the academic understanding, but also for your emotional happiness. Thank you very much. Thanks. I look forward to Johan's discussion. Thank you. Thanks. Our discussion is uh, Johan Suleiman from NUS. Uh, he's going to provide the human touch. Go ahead. You have uh, 15 minutes. All right. uh, thanks, Roger. Uh, thanks to organizer for allowing me to discuss this paper. It's a very interesting paper. Uh, as described, as sort of mentioned earlier, this is related to my previous work. So I'm very interested in the, the, in the subject. And I think that will color my discussion in both negative and positive direction. Okay. So I think this is a very important question, trying to understand the difference in terms of information collection between hard and soft information collection. Uh, the argument that Jenny has uh, this provided earlier about the difference between hard and soft is that hard information does not require proximity. So these are things like the balance sheet, uh, perhaps credit rating and, and things that can be observed easily from the distance, uh, from a distance, and then soft information which may require proximity. Now, I find it curious that I think we, we actually came up with um, two or three of the same examples of how people interact. We talk about cafe, we talk about golf course. I added two things, which are things, that, uh, information that can be collected from just meeting people on the street, as well as factory. So factory is a little bit tricky here because I'm basically talking about the ability to collect information by being on the ground, by being able to visit um, the company. This is something that in the US we don't talk too much about, but in uh, I think if you look at the, for example, papers are coming out of China about site visits, then there's a lot of interactions that happen um, in, the, in the company itself, right? So, so that's something that is also curtailed during this period of the COVID pandemic. 
there's a lot of literature, literature trying to identify the um, the difference between hard and soft information. So the the voluminous literature that yeah, Jenny referred to earlier is about local bias or home bias. There's a lot of literature here, right? So the reason why I don't put all the papers here is because it will take up the whole, basically the whole page. And some of these are done by people in this virtual meeting room. The, this is just one part of the information, the, oh, sorry, one part of the literature. There's another part of the literature that talks about the soft information within the firm. And I think this is actually something that may be interesting to look at as well during the pandemic. I'm not sure how much of it is done, but if I were to work on this topic, I think this will be my, presumably my number one uh, direction, which is that now that you're forcing people to stay at home, doing more virtual Zoom meetings, does it actually improve the performance transmission within the firm. Because many firms have operations in multiple locations and it's very difficult not to fly, very difficult to actually visit factories and so on. So perhaps there is also some uh, changes within the firm. Now, the, there are many ways to test these different information channels. So for example, to test the high information channel, perhaps introduction to, of electronic access uh, to high information would be one way to do this. Uh, I've worked on this before, looking at what happened when Edgar was introduced in 97. And uh, between 97 and 2000, you see an improvement in the reliance on hard information. And vice versa, do you, do you actually have less local bias during that period? And we, indeed, we see that there's a sharp reduction in local bias around the turn of the uh, century, the turn of the millennium. I think Clemens has a similar question in the, in the chat box about Zoom. Uh, uh, because Zoom may actually allow us to have uh, better ways to access hard information. So for example, I'm assuming that most people now, while listening to Jenny, and while it's sort of ignoring my discussion, they're all reading the paper, right? Because the, now you are actually able to do that at the same time. Well, if you are in the seminar room in Shangri-La, you're gonna ignore um, all this and just listen to Jenny, but now you can sort of do multitasking. So perhaps this, this is what, is happening rather than the reduction on the soft, uh, reliance on soft information. So there are many ways to test the soft information channel. One is this introduction of proximity access, right? So airline roads uh, in Europe paper in 2013. Uh, I have a paper on high-speed uh, rail in China. There are many papers actually now looking at the China market uh, China, because you can actually look at the site visits and see whether or not high-speed rail increases the, the frequency of site visits to obtain this soft information directly from the factory locations or from the company locations. This paper is related to the removal of proximity access. To some extent, this is related to uh, a paper by uh, Sophie Scheif uh, looking at electrical uh, outages in the US and showing that when electrical outage happens, the, of the volume of trading goes down. And the inference is that this volume of trading is coming out of the local area. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about this because I actually have a point related to this electrical outages. Um, this paper is solely focused on the COVID restrictions. Okay? Uh, I don't have much to say regarding the, 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 uh, the, the analytical inference. Uh, I think it's an interesting research, uh, well-written paper. Uh, it's very timely. Right? It's very timely, and I think if, if the authors would like to publish this paper, they need to move really fast. So I think this is actually the time to try to publish this. Right, The, the one thing that I want to say is that I feel like I need to understand the inferences, the various inferences better. Uh, the one issue that I have with the paper is that the research question seems to have been well covered. Uh, there are many papers that talk about soft versus hard information, local versus non-local uh, uh, investments, and so on. So I would actually recommend there are other research questions that can be asked using this setting. And I will talk a bit more about, about those uh, potential research questions as well. Okay, so this is the first comment. And this is actually something that I, I feel very strongly about, which is the information advantage doesn't always translate into access holdings. So uh, in the previous uh, presentation, we talked a lot about short sellers. Short sellers, I assume, have information advantage, and yet they do not go long, right? They go short precisely because they have negative information, right? So negative information actually should result in avoidance of holdings. Uh, the mutual funds in many of the tests that Jenny is running actually cannot go short, but they can underweight 
which is what they, what, what is being observed here. Uh, to some extent, uh, there may also be uh, hedge funds in the sample. They may actually go short. Uh, you, 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 it's really tough to observe those in, 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 the, in, the, in this analysis. Um, now, one thing that should be observed is that if there's information advantage, then likely there should be more trading activities. Particularly, informational advantage is short-lived. This could be what is being observed here, which is that these um, local investors are actually going short or underweighting and they change their holdings. Now, this may be because of the negative impact of COVID on the firm performance, which is sort of related to, I think, the, uh, I think, would pause question in the chat box. Uh, do they shift somewhere else? What do they shift? Do they have negative information about local stocks because of the work from home restrictions? And then they, therefore they invest in distant stocks. They are not, they are less affected. Um, what, is, what is going on actually? Now, it's not obvious how to capture that in, in the data. Uh, in my previous work, we actually look at Abel Noser data and Seno data. And uh, now I think you cannot do that anymore. Uh, but if, if, there, if there's a way for you to actually look at the trading, then perhaps you can show that the trading of local stocks actually are affected or not affected. Uh, during this COVID period. Um, my paper shows that local holdings have declined over time, but local trading bias actually has, if anything, has increased over time, uh, particularly because the soft information, the soft information advantage have uh, sort of declined over time in terms of the, 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 uh, the length of the advantage. Okay. Uh, we find that local holdings and local tradings have negative correlation, uh, low correlation, sometimes negative. So, Therefore, you can actually start looking at this trading instead of holdings. I don't know how to do it in the sample. It's not obvious to me. I've been thinking, trying to think about how do you get the, uh, this information in using only the snapshots. It's not obvious to me. Okay. Um, now, one issue that you may have is that funds with high local holdings may be inferior precisely because they could be affected by familiarity bias. And therefore, because they are inferior, they are affected more negatively by COVID. It's not, I don't know how to separate these two. I'm going to talk a bit more about how do you separate these two, perhaps, but it's not obvious to me. Five minutes. Um, okay, good. The, the main um, result in the paper from my perspective is this all funds increase investments distance. This is uh, figure three in the paper. I think this is a very illustrative figure, very important figure. And the reason I say that is because I think this is in contrast to previous ex uh, evidence in the literature. So after the great financial crisis, there's been, there were multitudes of paper looking at the retrenchment, meaning local bias increasing during crisis. Um, Catherine Forbes and Frank Warnock has a paper. Uh, Maria Sunta has a paper about this um, increasing in, increase in local bias during the great financial crisis. I think this paper is sort of uh, going against that. I actually feel that this is a very important piece of evidence that we need to, to have in the literature. Uh, but I would like to understand a bit more about what drives this pattern. Um, so the active share seems to be decreasing in the sample. This, seems, this means that these funds behave more like index funds. Now, my opinion on this is that trying to reduce idiosyncratic risk by, from coming from overweighting local stocks seems prudent during high volatility periods. So you behave more like indexer. Okay, so, and therefore reducing the likelihood that you are going to underperform during crisis. Now, the problem is that as you try to, to execute the strategy of going away from the high inducing character stocks, the trading may actually lose money, right? You may lose money when you are trying to execute the strategy. And that may be what is being picked up here in the, in the data rather than them actually investing poorly. Is that they are trying to pull back towards more idiosyncratic, uh, sorry, lower idiosyncratic strategy. Uh, you can look at tracking errors. Uh, you look at RPI, but I find that they are also dropped for all funds. Now, my point here is that all the evidence seems to point that they are just pulling back from strategies that are more active to something that's more passive that looks more like a benchmark. Okay. This, then the author can come back to me and say, look, this basically shows that local information production, solid information is very costly and therefore it's it becomes more costly during this high idiosyncratic uh, risk period. Okay, then maybe we can try to drill down on looking at uh, potential cross-sectional variation across regions or across industries. And I think this is something that can be looked at uh, more than what has been done in the paper, rather than looking at the variation across funds. 
So I find this result to be very interesting. I would like to see robustness and variation in this, in this pattern. Okay? I feel that you also need a formal statistical test for figure three uh, when you do analysis at the fund level. I think you need to show there's some robustness of results in the fund level rather than looking at stock fund level in table two that you show to the audience. All right. Um, some caveats. You need a benchmark window. Do funds lose money on the proximal stocks during COVID? During lockdown, do they sell the correct proximal stocks that will, they will subsequently underperform? Do they buy the correct distance stocks when, when they're switching out of the local stocks? Okay. Um, I think you can play a bit more with the fund holdings data. Uh, I understand that you stop analysis in June 20, uh, 2020. Um, but I think there could be more. You, you have more. You have three more quarters of data now, presumably, or two more quarters of data you can play with. Maybe you can look at uh, some return decomposition, some return gap measure, uh, perhaps segregate the local sub-portfolio returns versus the distant portfolio returns. And so, so there could be more analysis that you can do in this, in this front. Um, do funds trade less? I really would like to see some evidence about trading because I think you can say something about this. Um, Sophie Shah's paper, as I mentioned earlier, you see the turnover dropping. Uh, the big picture question I want to I wanna see answered, and I don't know if this is the right paper to answer it, is whether or not the information quality of the resident firms in an area drop when the area experiences this movement restrictions. I think that's an, my personal opinion is, I, I find this to be more interesting than looking at farm performance. That's my opinion. But, you know, I think everybody has different uh, agenda. I have lots of quibbles, uh, comments about magnitudes, about looking at active versus non-active, uh, uh, somewhat like index, uh, quasi-indexer. Uh, one, one thing that seems striking to me when you're looking at returns is that the raw return result is very strong. The excess return result is weaker, about one third of the raw return result, which means that two thirds of the raw return result is coming from the benchmark. So the benchmark is different. The benchmark return is different between firms that have local presence versus those that have distant presence. I, I'm not sure what that means. I think that means the benchmark is different between these two set of funds. So perhaps you need to look at why the benchmark returns behave that way during, during this period. I think that may be an interesting result uh, as well. Um, quibbles, quibbles, quibbles. I'm not going to talk too much about it. More quibbles, some advisory. Uh, just general observations. I think the research is very interesting. Um, um, the, the results are very timely. It's consistent with my prior that local bias has declined over time. Uh, I would like to actually see a longer time trend rather than just looking at the, 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 the sixth quarter that you documented. I would like to see perhaps six years of, of this graph. My sense is that you will see in a slow increasing distance. It may not be as dramatic as what you see during COVID, but my sense is that you should see some increasing pattern. Um, that's my prior. Uh, I think you want to play around with this time series pattern. I think that's actually where the, the, the paper has a lot of contribution. Uh, looking at trading, perhaps at the fund level, perhaps at the portfolio, uh, at the stock level, because you can look at turnover, whether or not turnover is different between stocks that are dominated by local funds versus those that are dominated by more distant funds. Um, and you can play around with this benchmark returns. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. I have one more quibble later, but I'm just going to leave you with this slide. Right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Johan. Okay. Um, so before I ask Jenny and Massimo to address uh, the questions and uh, Johan's comments, okay, we, we will uh, stop at 10.05. And after that, we'll go for a 10 minute break before coming back at 10.15. Okay, so Jenny, go ahead and uh, you know uh, address some of Johan's questions. After that, you can look at the chat. There are, there are like four or five questions that are also there. Go ahead. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Johan. I love the, those comments. Uh, it's uh, picking up some things that we clearly have not taken into consideration. And some of the suggestions, we are actually under doing it. As I said, it's very preliminary work, uh, and I'm working on that. And you mentioned multiple of them. We are actually working on that, like return gap and all the things. It's very interesting. I have not checked the people's question in the chat. I just see occasionally popping up. Uh, people also curious about uh, what what do they invest? What distance do they invest the good things? What do they sell? I think we definitely could e investigate more on that things. But our original idea is just to want to 
want to check this uh, virtual word and the soft information. And this is, uh, uh, we probably couldn't do those six years thing. Why? Because we don't have a natural experiment for this randomized uh, exogenous shock. If we don't do have that thing, there are tons of many other things can affecting those things. The key here is this randomized experiment. That's why we, in, we started this in a very short window during the COVID lockdown. We want to check how human interaction affecting it. But other comments, it's all well taken. We're going to seriously consider it. You will see a much better version in the next uh, next month, so hopefully. We truly appreciate uh, your comments. Thank you very much, Johan. Massimo, you have anything to supplement? No, just one, uh, <clears throat> one intuition is that in general, the literature on soft and hard information, if you think about, we consider an investment coming from mutual funds that originally started with banks and comes with the idea of uh, hard information is something that you codify. Soft information is the rest. But codification is one issue. Then we interpreted the soft as something related to interaction. But the question is, which type of interaction? You can have interaction by physical interaction, meeting people, or you may have even Zoom interaction. So when we started, the key question was, what does it really mean, hard and soft? And we were even thinking, maybe they are going to substitute uh, soft uh, physical interaction with soft hard, let's say Zoom. But the reality, what we found strange is, they are actually replacing soft with hard, which means uh, Zoom uh, in some way is a, pure is a very poor substitute and hard becomes more interesting. And that's what was uh, when we started working on these, which effectively Zoom doesn't seem to be a very good substitute. That was uh, uh, what we found interesting and very different with the standard stories. Okay. Again. Collect a few questions. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, the first Roger, question was asked by uh, Clemens. Clemens, do you want to uh, repeat, I guess, uh, Clemens? Yeah, hello. Yes. Um, sorry, hi. Hi, Clemens. Can you hear me? Yeah, the question yeah. was just, and, and I think Massimo and uh, mentioned that is that Zoom could uh, lead to uh, to investing in companies that are further away, and and therefore the local advantages might actually drop. But 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 you address that. Uh, not fully, just, uh, you know, Zoom can be, Zoom is a virtual interaction. It can be local information and it can be the further away information. And this one, we carefully think, and we talk to some behavioral people and in, even in those people in the management literature. So currently it's showing, you know, you cannot even substitute fully with local soft information. For further away, any Zoom, like uh, Clemens, you and I have a meeting, we have a specific question. It's more specific and we, it's, it's, we know each other, so we start this meeting. It's much lower chance you're gonna start a new meeting with some stranger and you're gonna build up this new relationship with further away. I mean, conditional, even local ones, you cannot be fully recovered by that things. And another thing in the management literature, they show this virtual things, you know, they have specific goals. It's not like you and I sitting there in the, you know, in the, in, in the Shangri-La Hotel, in the ABFER, and we sit there just chatting. And a lot of these ideas will come from this random chatting. But uh, Zoom, we have specific things. It doesn't mean cannot generate information, but they even cannot generate enough information for local companies. It's a far less even possibility to generate information, soft, soft information for the further away firms. That's what we think, but we have not figured out a way to formally address those things. Okay, thanks. Chifei, you wanna ask your question? Okay, it's not here. How about uh, Jingi has a question. He asked why human touch is not replaceable. Human touch is so important. Can you fully rely on just the virtual things in this virtual world? Well, this is a profound question, psychological questions. 
we just show you cannot fully, we, we, without those interactions, physical interaction, you just cannot replicate all your information advantages. Yes, you can do Zoom, but as I mentioned, Zoom has its shortcomings. I still have a con virtual talks with co-authors, but specifically, but to discover some very, very new information for a lot of local firms, that Zoom is just not sufficient enough to do that. And also, I think I mentioned briefly, although we didn't formally address it, this virtual world needs some barrier, this technology and also the adaptment the, the, the you customer, you, you rely on virtually to build up this information. I think during this pandemic shock, it's such a sudden shock. People need a transition. It's not that easy to be easily conver converted. You whole communication, social patterns directly from physical to the online. If you we are forced in lockdown entire world for one year, two years, I guess probably by that time, uh, without human interactions, this virtual world probably already can generate a lot of this information. But the transition needs time. Given our sample for this pandemic lockdown, they are not sufficient in our window. Okay, uh, thank you. I think we'll end here. There's another question by Wei Kai on price efficiency, but you can, you can look at it later yourself. Um, okay, okay. All right, so we'll take, uh, thanks everyone for the presentation, uh, for Jenny and for Johan.